Welcome back. I'm Westing Tyler, and we're talking about my Ultima 6 fan recreation project. I'm going to go over my process for character creation right now. Um, it's a, I'm working on this workflow with Stable Diffusion and PIF UHD to create 3D models, and um, I'll show you how that works. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, so this is kind of what we're, this is what I'm going to be uh, working on. Um, let's see. Uh, the first step of this process is to get your characters. And for Ultima 6, um, you know, the, here's the list. So I grab the whole list, just like this. boop -a -da boop -a -da boop -a -da boop Got a whole list. All right, then I use my open office calc, uh, and I, you know, I bring up an empty spreadsheet. I paste it. There we go. All the names. There we go. Okay. Format them to default. So here's what we got. Then I go through. I can delete the things, the ones. Oh, D. There we go. D. Just gonna delete all the ones we don't need. And then I go through and I say, woman, woman, man, man, woman. The reason I separate them is because they require different prompts. And the whole point of this spreadsheet is to create uh, prompts to use in stable diffusion. You can uh, drop an entire chunk of prompts. I did like 3,000 for food once um, in one go into stable diffusion. Um, but for the characters, I want to chisel them a little bit more. So I found that if I just say, like, make me eight of these, and it turns out the prompt wasn't great, I have to go back and um, chisel the prompt anyway and say, add this, add this, and take away this, take away this. So now for this project, I'm going one character by character. And I've uh, concepted the women so far. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of that. That's uh, So then we end up with something like this. So here's the spreadsheet that I have right now. Um, so here, the I, I separate them into, like, general types that are going to have their own kind of prompts, like men, uh, women, non-humans, um, the gargoyles, they have, you know, their own, their own kind of thing. Uh, people we don't see, so which means I'm going to have to make up a, a prompt for them or look at the text in the game uh, to see, like, what they look like. Like, uh, let's see, where's, what's it? Gwen is described as extremely beautiful with fair hair and deep green eyes, even though she died before the game started, so we never see her. Um, I'm doing this something that I call the, uh, God, what is Eye of the Beholder principle for, uh, what's the first little bones, pile of bones you, Eye of the Beholder. I call this the Todd Uphill principle. In Eye of the Beholder, at the very beginning of the game, you're in the sewers and you see a pile of bones. And normally in most games, that'd just be a prop. But um, in Eye of the Beholder, you can take those bones and go get them resurrected. And it's a character named Todd Uphill, and you can join your party. I like that idea of taking every character in the game, even the ones you don't see, even the ones that are buried in graves, and developing them um, as characters uh, so that you can interact with them potentially you could like commune with the dead you could resurrect them you know have them join your party that's my kind of vibe that like if a character exists it should be a full character not just a prop you know um so that's what the uh the unseen characters are here for so we have all the women and i've, I've gone through all of the women and uh so when i'm making a prompt and we'll do that in a second um i do this because most of this is mass produced and this is stuff that I got online for Stable Diffusion that I see on Reddits and stuff where people find these kind of prompts very useful. Extremely detailed CG Unity 8K wallpaper. Um, I had candle wax skin because it gives like better get her, better skin tones without aren't as blown out. Um, even though you don't actually want somebody looking like candle wax. It's just you, you start to figure out what properties you can add that like make people or characters or what you're seeing look more like what you want. Even if they sound bizarre. Um, for instance, I add uh, Damask and Paisley all of the clothes um, because I like those little pat floral patterns and stuff and, and we'll see those in a second here are the characters that I have let's see that's my work folder actually where I, I just gather a pile of all my shortcuts so when I start the day I can just boop 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 click them all and if I hit control double click any of these folders they'll open as a new window too so that's kind of what you see at the bottom here that I have everything set up and that helps me with ADHD that helps me to stay on track when the works right in front of me in the order it needs to be just like recording this video how to have everything lined out or I'll totally forget what I'm talking about um, let's see uh, so, AOS characters, that's not it. There we go. Here are the ones I've made so far. Um, let's see. Uh, so, just going through, just like big piles of giant, giant piles of characters. Um, so, for instance, Stephanie, a healer in Empath Abbey. So, here's what her prompt looks like. Uh, see, so I have the, you have the positive prompt and you have the negative prompt in Stable Diffusion. So we're going to talk about my, my setup for Stable Diffusion in a minute as well, for getting these character turnarounds um, that I'll use for developing the characters. And here's kind of what we're going for, is stuff like this. And I'll do several, and I'll refine the prompt. See, there's the uh, Damask or Paisley uh, pattern that I like to add into everything. It makes things look a little fancier. Um, but you, obviously you got to 
it, you got to make sure that kind of thing fits with what you're doing. It's like, is it okay? Is it okay for a peasant to have those kind of patterns? Depends on how historically accurate you're being, or if you're being a little stylish, you know, a little stylized. I mean, um, you know, and so, so that's what I'm doing right now. And this is when I screwed up and forgot to put my pose in the control net, and so it didn't quite work. So here's what we're going to do. Now, stable diffusion. So here's, let's set up stable diffusion for doing this. First thing I do is I, I mean, I mean, for this type of thing, obviously there's a lot of setup for stable diffusion, and I'll include links below for installing stable diffusion, automatic 11.11 web GUI, which is the interface you're seeing right here, um, the control net extension, the config, what's it called? Let's see right here, config presets, which saves a lot of time as well. Um, but yeah, so right now I, I, I set the prompt with the words and the date uh, time, I set that right there. So that's gonna give me, when any time I generate stuff, it's going to have start like this. And I put the name of the character at the beginning of the spreadsheet prompt, because what I'm gonna be doing is grabbing, starting with a name, say we take Doris right here. I'm gonna grab this, go all the way over, make sure that I'm getting all the little bits, copy, now, watch this. So when I go to Stable Diffusion, okay, so presets, I'm going to go to my character turnaround, which just sets the sampling method to DDIM. It sets the width and the height to what I want. And I'm going to turn on a Control Net Zero. Um, I'm going to enable it, go to Open Pose, because that's what we're working with, and uh, Open Pose here as well. So bada boom, bada boom. I like to make sure this is the same width, but it doesn't seem like it makes a difference, honestly. Um, but there we go, boom, so that's the same width. I wish there was a button I could click to auto do that. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna grab my prompt again. Where's my presompt? There it is, copy that. Now watch what happens, it's really obnoxious. Um, so when I paste it here, it pasted like the image or the text as an image down here, which is annoying when I have my pose set up. So I always just keep this pose folder open so I can just drag my pose in there. This is a character from my game, Knots game, a girl dressed as a witch, Rory. Um, uh, so I can just grab the pose and this is a turnaround, a character reference sheet, full body reference sheet turnaround thing. And I generated these images individually, like painstakingly, and then I in-painted to, th to get them to be consistent with each other. Of course, that doesn't matter for the pose here, it's just extracting the pose. But then I assembled this into one little picture, and once I've done it once, now I can just reuse whichever one I think is the best, most straight on, and that'll work for everything I'm working with. Um, so, there we go. So now that I've done that, and I've posted this day here, I gotta make sure I grab a negative um, you know what, in fact, let's use the presets. Guys, presets are your total friend. So starter, plus, and minus. There we go. Um, that's what I, let's see. So that's what I generally start with. And I, I didn't craft most of this. You'll insert your stuff right there. You know, person, in, outfit, you know, whatever. And if you want a different scene, keep in mind that this is at sunset, full color, autumnal eve. And that's, again, to get warm skin tones and stuff that are not blown out. Um, uh, but okay, so let's see. So get rid of that. I'm going to keep this. Some of these models that I have, I, I'm using Protogen version 2.2, Anime 2.2, Safe Tensors. The safe Tensors is like the safe version. It's not the Pickle Tensors, which is, I, I don't know all this technical stuff. But again, I'm, I'm going to include links to like getting all this stuff set up uh, to, to videos down below because there are some YouTubers who have this all set up pretty well and it's pretty 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 smooth how, how they do that. Okay, so, but some of them are pretty... Um, uh, one of the, the models that I use, Realistic Visions 1.3, it's really great, but it defaults toward like skimpy clothing. So if you don't want that, if you're doing like modest 1300s people, uh, you, you know, uh, then I add stuff like this in the prompt, like mini skirt shorts, that's a negative prompt, so it won't do those things. Uh, but then the rest is just something I got on like the Reddits, where you can see like people post their prompts and stuff to give you an idea. Um, it's like why reinvent the wheel? If these are the words that work well to speak to the engine, um, then that's great. So. Let's grab this, give it, grab a prompt again, our positive prompt, drop it in here. Make sure that I, I do this sometimes, just paste it into a text thing, grab it, and then, then there it again. That way it won't remove my pose um, image and I don't have to reset that. It gets quicker than just resetting the pose image and going, oh, okay, grab the pose image all the time. So I do that. So Protogen, yeah, version 2.2 anime. Um, great model it's what i use for pretty much everything uh, and realistic visions 1.3 okay so let's say this looks good looks good restore faces i'm gonna keep that on um 
seed random blah 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 all right now I'm just gonna hit the button and this will give you an idea and then we're gonna start crafting one for because I'm working on the men now so we'll craft a man prompt and we'll do that and then I'll run it through the PIF UHD thing to actually generate a 3d model very bad topology I'll import that into blender and I'll show you here's what that actually looks like while this is running um, let's see I will here's here are the models I have so far these are very rough Every part of this is rough. Eventually, the, uh, it's, it's lagging because I'm using all of my video card right now to, to generate the... Uh, <laughs> it's, all right, so we've generated one image here. Um, usually, this, this process takes about 11, 12, 15 seconds to generate each image. Um, it's slower, a lot slower, because I have OBS open and uh, Blender open and Paint Shop Pro open <laughs> all at the same time uh, that I'm trying to... to, to render these. So there you go, there's one, that's just an, it's just an example. And it'll match the pose that I have here with control net exactly, which is awesome. So if I go into my poses, and I grab, say, if I say I get bored of like these, like, these turnaround images, and I want to see like an actual human character for once, um, and see if I'm on the right track in that regard, I'll do this. And I'll generate a portrait like this. So this is an actual, a nice portrait. You still have little fingers issues, but with uh, the newer models, um, that's less and less of an issue. With the Realistic Visions 1.3, um, that is, all, it, it, it happens far less often uh, than with the standard like 1.5 Stable Diffusion, which looks like blown out stock imagery. It's not very cinematic. It's not really good, uh, rich shadows and stuff, and, uh, and and skin tones as much as these other models. So I highly recommend you know checking out some of these models on like Civet AI. Uh, the website and on hugging face and stuff because they make all the difference you think like oh man i'm just not as good at prompt engineering as other people it's just the model it's just the model just copy paste this stuff and uh use a good model and uh it'll be a lot better um right out the box okay so here we go so we've generated a couple of these i have it set so they all go to an organized folder see they're named so like they're easily searchable later um and I do have the prompts right here, so I can always go back and grab the prompts and continue where I left off if I want to continue developing a specific character. Um, in my spreadsheet, I, I in my spreadsheet, I um, I update this in here. So here's the actual character stuff that I uh, write, and we're about to get into writing writing one of these. Um, it's it's I mean you just describe it and then find words that work. It's not you know this big uh, magical thing, but um. Uh, I update this in here as I generate new images and tweak the prompt in Stable Diffusion. So, so the, the when I do come back, if I do just like want to dump things from the spreadsheet into Stable Diffusion, then I can do that um, a little bit. Although I don't have the negative prompts in here, so if I've like used negative prompts to remove a lot of little pieces from a specific character's prompt, then I'll have to go back to their their own folder to grab that um, from their prompt images uh, like these rather than just relying on what's in here. So this is a mostly up-to-date uh, spreadsheet that I try to keep with all the characters, um, but it's not always uh, totally up-to-date. And right up there in the corner, I'm gonna have a video right here uh, that shows mass prompting things um, that with the food that I've made as an example, like the ones you see here. Uh, so check that out too. But yeah, so th there's the women. There's about 40 women in Ultima 6. There's about 120 guys in Ultima 6. Then there's like 10 or, or 4, no, not like 10. It's like, here they are, 5 children and teenagers. Um, and then there's um, people you haven't seen and then there's all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, and that's not including monsters and animals. Um, but yeah, okay. So, uh, so I guess I should go over each one of these parts. So I put the name then I put uh, a description of them that I got from the um, thing. So I, if you right click, press T. Now I've opened that one up. Okay, so I would grab right here. Grab that. And that's what I would put for the first part of the prompt right here. Although first I will format it just a little bit. So boom, 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 boom. All right, I'll go. Double click, there. S enter. Double click, there. Oh, enter. Double click, there. Enter. Honorable Mayor of Trinsic. And Ultima 6. There, enter. Double click, there. Enter. Copy paste, that's what we're doing here. 
Okay, so boom. So you get them all like this. And then I go, this is Sublime Text. I think it costs $89. It is hugely beneficial. Um, I'm sure there are other apps that are free that, that, that have this kind of functionality. Watch this. I don't need the in Ultima 6. I don't know what that's going to prompt for. I don't know what it's going to do. It might make it all look like um, like 1980s DOS, like EGA graphics or something. So I just get rid of that for now. So Control F, Ultima, space 6. Okay. Let's put a space in front of it. Find all. And delete. There we go. Boom. And a lot of them have periods. So I just go boop. Then I'll take the one that doesn't and get rid of that. So imagine doing this for 150 at once. These like mass movements. Um, and so let's say it's like is a. Like this is where I want his name in a different uh, cell. So control F. Anything that says space is a space. I'm going to find all those. And I'm just going to put a tab right there instead. So now that'll format instantly when I drop it in here into two cells. Boop because I put the tab, and tab makes it go to a different cell. So you can format pretty quickly mass amounts of stuff in Sublime Text. Um, so or, there's, there's is the, for example, find all, tab, there. Or you could go, you know, or whatever. Or double tab, or depending on how many cells you want things spaced apart. So this is how you can massively format things like very quickly. Um, and so then I'll do that, and I'll take all those, I'll drop them into the spreadsheet thusly um, just because it's it gives you it kind of points the AI in a direction then I put medieval middle ages in parentheses because parentheses makes the prompt stronger in that direction um, and the more parentheses you have the stronger it is in that direction um, and then I put a general age which I'll just look at the picture and figure out an age um, I'll put if it's a man or a woman or a girl or a boy or whatever in this case look at this woman what did I put after this woman man yeah if I want a woman but I want like to have some more masculine features then I'll put it together now trying to be like politically incorrect or any of that stuff I'm just trying to think of concepts that are distinct that the AI like can you can merge properties of to get a character that is is more androgynous or like a masculine woman or whatever so um, it, it, it's you know so, so it's, it's all about finding the words that work with uh, best with the with the AI um, yeah, and in this, this particular case, Emmanuel, um, yeah, masculine, Xena, Elvira, Spanish. I'll put um, a, a character or an actor, but if I do, I try to put three or four, so it kind of merges them um, and, and or has a very light weight of, of them, just to kind of point in direction. It'll, it's not going to look like the actor, but, but, but some of these characters, it looks like they were designed to look like people, like Sigalian, how he was like clearly made to be Magnum P.I., you know, so do I replicate that? Like, is it immoral to use AI to, like, just say, Tom Selleck, you know, <laughs> the knight, you know, is, I don't know, we'll get to Sigalian eventually, you know, and I'll have to make that decision. But yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a really big issue because you're, it's a mixing of so many things. Um, I don't, I just don't think it's a big deal. Um, but yeah, I do try to, if I, 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 I don't really include like artists and stuff like that and photographers and stuff, their names, that doesn't feel quite right to me. But if I do sometimes, I'll include like four or five. So it's like kind of pointing in the direction of this vague style, but it's not just like copy this person's work. Even and everybody falls differently on uh, where uh, ethically uh, this kind of stuff works. And um, so that's a, a bunch of open questions. But uh, yeah, so I'll have, I'll, the, right here is where I write the description. Um, and we'll go through a few, and, and that'll be the actual process I'm going to show. Um, and then right here, okay, that was empty. Right here, okay, that's also empty. Right here. For, these are things I, I, that are pretty standard. If you see all the women here have this. And then I get rid of it in the prompt if it's pointing too much in this direction. These are like medieval uh, clothing pieces um, that, that help kind of like guide the model. If I don't say high neckline, most of the models that I have will like give them like, like a lot of cleavage uh, and stuff, which may not be historically accurate depending on the location and time period um so so yeah so the uh so uh, cot yeah and curdle bodice high neckline so that's one of the default things i won't have that for the men's section that's why having these separated into sections helps because there are a bunch of governing words in the prompts like a copy paste for just all the women and then for the men it'll be a different set of things that that like standard It'll be like pantaloons buccaneer boots uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, depending on 
depending on the character. And then at the end, I just have the um, the default uh, thing that uh, the Realistic Visions 1.3 model on Civet AI suggests this prompt, you know, extremely detailed CG Unity, AK wallpaper, blah, blah, blah. I added the candle wax part. Uh, and then after that, there's actually, yeah, and then there's another part to it that, that's a different set of stuff. This might even be the, I, it's different things I merged together by looking at the Reddits to see what people recommend. Um, and so that's, my, this, that builds your prompt. And that's, as we've just seen, that's how you generate one. Um, and so, so once I've gathered all my characters in the spreadsheet like this, then I have to go and do this. And this is what I did. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this. Right click, T, T, right click, T, right click, T, and do all this for all 200 characters. Then I go in, right click V, then we're gonna save that GIF to the folder that I've made. Do that for every single one of these people. Remember along the way, copying their their text prompts too, like the, of their like their job and everything, just to get an idea for it. Then you end up with a folder like this. So here's what I have: I have men, kids and teens, non-human. Don't I have a? Oh yeah, and then there were some that weren't like from Ultima Six portraits. Like uh, all of the companions on that uh, the wiki were like using Ultima Seven portraits and stuff. I was like, no, they gotta look like the Ultima Six characters. So I had to go back and reget those. That's what that that folder is for. Done reget. So now here here's where I am now. Um, they're alphabetical. They're all human men um, of adult age. And then I just go through. And yeah, even for Amenix and Mondane, I uh, went and grabbed some some relevant imagery for them. And uh, uh, Denis Lubay, the artist who does a lot of the Ultima stuff, he did on his Twitter, he showed that he had done a Menix por a portrait. So I was like, okay, well, and that's what she looks like then. So I just grabbed that one and to, for reference. Um, and what I'll go through here, and here's the process of actually creating these. So let's start with Aaron, okay? So where's, we'll like, do this, I'll do it like this, boop, and I'll have that down there, and I'll have this, boop, up there. All right, so Aaron, Sawmill Workle in, in Minoc? 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 I don't know. I'll have to look at the FM Towns voice versions to see how they pronounce it. Um, all right, let's see. So Sawmill Workle, Worker. I've actually already done his. Yeah, short, curly, blonde hair, heavy set husky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I and mean, that's pretty standard. And it's a medieval mid twenties man sawmill worker. Well, then that doesn't do us any good. I'll I'll start with this guy, Andreas. All right. So, looking at the picture here. Oh, that's actually. I need to move this over so you can see it. There he is, right there. Okay. So, where did I put it? My names are out of. There we go. Andreas. Alistair. I'm skipping around, but you get an idea. Okay, so what are his features here? And I could go to the texts, like like where you would see people and it describes them, and I, I'll probably end up refining that relevant as it's relevant later and like going and say, like, you see a person with blah, blah, blah features and it doesn't look like their portrait. I'll have to merge those two kind of concepts. Um, so Andreas, let's see. Short, wild, black, raven-haired, mustache, stubble uh brown clothes collar that's good enough to start and that's what that's what we'll do that's and that's what i always do is i get like a basic description of what he looks like there and is there an actor or a couple of actors that vaguely look similar to this guy ron jeremy maybe i mean it wouldn't hurt to throw ron jeremy in Watch, it won't make a difference very much, but it'll kind of give it an idea. Ron, Jeremy. I could have done Super Mario as well because they look kind of similar. All right, so now I'm going to go to my text document to, like, clean the prompt of, like, metadata so it doesn't post a, a, po a pose image. There we go. Boom. And then I'm just going to hit the button. I might have to stop and wait um, just because my pr computer cannot handle OBS and this at the same I have an 8 gigabyte uh, RTX 2060 Super it was like $400 when it was new so it's, it's pretty good um, I think it's 250 now or something like that it might be a little more than that but it's a really decent card um, 
but of course, and, and I never really cared about this stuff before, about video cards, but now I do, because like now I want like a 24 gigabyte like RTX 3090 or whatever, which costs like $1,500 just to, just to be able to do high resolutions and do things faster and everything. Um, suddenly these things I didn't care about before are, are really relevant. Okay, so I'm going to start generating this guy. Wait. Width, 682. I, I need to flip this back because I had done that portrait, so I want it wide again. And I need to get, actually get my pose. Boop. And I screw this up all the time and end up with a bunch of images that uh, aren't what I wanted. Here we go. All right, so here's the first image. So now I'll grab the man doodle. Let's see, and I'll compare. What am I looking at? So does this guy look roughly like this? Yes. Um, I would probably want to in paint cause I, uh, to get the collar back. Um, but he has a mustache. He does have a beard, so I'm going to put beard in the negative prompt here. Beard. Bearded. He has a mustache but no beard. And then uh, let's see what else is going to change. White collar. What, what's the word for that? In fact, here's what we do with that. Hey, chat GPT. What's a word for uh, when you have a white undershirt that has collar things that flip to the sides medieval style vocabulary suddenly becomes like a really important skill like and super valuable tunic or doublet okay and then we take tunic and doublet okay i know i know this is bs it's bs a lot with the chat gpt that's why you gotta double check that's not what we're looking for not a tunic not doesn't have that flippy collar right so next one was doublet not exactly. It's more just like a dress shirt with a collar. <laughs> no, what is the collar called on a nice modern white dress shirt you wear under a vest? I just need a word for this thing. I could put it in parentheses and make sure it uh, shows up. And if I can't get it to happen in a normal generation, I can go to the, send it to the end painting tab and do that. The collar you are referring to is called a spread collar. Okay, let's see what we got. Spread collar. That looks right. Boom. There we go. And this is what you really want is stuff like this. Oval, round, angular, point, semi-spread, spread. There we go. Point, semi-spread. I'm going to add both of those because that looks like that's what we want. So go to man. I always try to keep my, my custom prompt stuff right in the middle right here in this little section. So, so, boop, 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 boop. Point, semi, spread, spread, collar. All right, so I've double parentheses that. So let's hit the generate button again and see what we got. And as you can see, I am cutting. That took about 12 seconds, um, which is fantastic. Like, fant okay. So you see one problem. He's not really facing forward. I'm gonna need these for, for textures later and they're going to be symmetrical. So I, I, I forgot to set the weight to two. That's one thing I got. But as far as the collar goes, eh, meh, maybe closer, closer, eh. I'll do it again. And as you can see, it doesn't really look like Ron Jeremy, but it does have some of the basic features, like the curly dark hair, uh, facial hair. Like, you know, it starts, so it's like peppering in like some names. Just It kind of gives it just a little bit of flavor. Um, all right, so we've done a few more. I've added a couple of things like long bob just to get his hair a little shorter. Um, it doesn't look like English peasanty enough, and I think it's he needs pantaloons. So here's what I'll do: is boop, 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 boop. It, it looks a little fancy, so I would be like pant pantaloons, buccaneer boots, which is like those pirate boot things with like a little flap at the top. Buccaneer. Make sure you spell things the way the engine wants you to. Buccaneer. There we go. Okay. And I didn't even spell bearded right. I spelled it bearded. There. All right. I'm going to generate some more. All right. This is kind of cool as a start. And again, I would generate like 
seven, eight, nine of these continuing to refine, and this is still just the first step of the process. Um, I will I will take this into in painting um, and remove parts that don't really match the portrait, and I'll take it into Paint Shop Pro and just add a color cast to get the colors the way I want, and I'll do the same thing for the side and back views as well, and it will end up with a pretty consistent uh, thing. Um, and that's what I'll take to the PIF UHD uh, image to 3d generator um, all right so so we have this so uh, so this looks fine to me so the next thing I look is is who is this character Andreas okay okay self-proclaimed prince of the Romani and I Roma Romanian Jewish um, it is say gypsy um, generally we avoid the word gypsy nowadays um, it's it's for the Romani people, and then like so as far as Romani, you're talking about uh, the Eastern European, and I and I add Jewish to things a lot to to get some some features kind of from that part of the world. Um, so so yeah, so it's just saying self-proclaimed prince of the gypsies. I said self-proclaimed prince of the Romani, Romanian, Jewish. <laughs> you just add whatever words you think, kind of put it in that area ethnically, um, just kind of that region of the world, um, and and you know it's it, it's it's like little it's like adding your ingredients, you know like it's, it's it don't you can't take the words personal. You're just trying to get the things that give the engine, like what it understands these concepts to be, you know. There and, and the engine does have biases, like how if you just type man, you're probably gonna get a white guy, a white American guy, you know. Um, so, so it's like it has like these defaults just because the training data is overfit, has a lot of that kind of data in it. Um, you know, like a stable diffusion is trained on text crawls of the English web, right? Or, or image crawls of the English web. So the English speaking stuff is more likely to have, you know, like white guys on the, you know, like pictures of white guys, you know, so. Uh, so, so the other other ethnicities and regions of the world are underrepresented in that data set. So when you type man, you're going to get an overrepresentation of that. So you need to push it with your wording, with your prompting, toward um, away from certain things that you don't want for a specific look or, or a character. Um, so, so there we go. So that's okay. So that's cool. Self-proclaimed prince of the Romani. He looks kind of princey. Could be an outfit, you know. Let me do one more. Um, is there anything I want to change? Let's look at. Let's look at our guy. Here's what we're going for. Yeah, that could work. I'm gonna add leather because I feel like he needs like his shirt is like a leather kind of thing. So I'm just gonna put boop 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 and add leather. And you could be specific if you wanted, but uh, I'm just you know doing some. Let's see what it gives me. Yeah, and this is cool. I like this. So you get an idea. So here's what you got. Here's the portrait. He even has a white collar. He has like a leather kind of overcoat thing. See, it's starting to look like it, this would be a translation of this of this character. He has the mustache only and some facial hair. Ah, oh, that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, so that's good. So let's let's take that as our guy that we're gonna make a 3D model out of. Um, let's see where do we go to do this nonsense. So first of all, I want to make. I'm in, I need a portrait now. So I'm gonna grab my portrait. Boop. I flip the resolution. And I love Control Net so much because I never have to add information about poses and framing into my prompts ever again. Notice this is exactly the same prompt. It's it's this guy is the prompt, not this guy standing this way, pointing with his hands to the left. Of the, none of that nonsense. It's it's just the guy, and here's the Control Net tells you exactly how he's gonna be be positioned. So now let's do the exact same prompt, but like this. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do. Th Four, and we'll take a look at them. So here's what we got. We got this one. When I added buccaneer boots, it heard pirate, I think. So it added a, a, a pirate hat, a piratey hat kind of thing. It's not a tricorn hat where it's like, tch, 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 um, but it's, it's piratey. Well, there's another one. And I could go in and say no hat, you know, but uh, for demonstration purposes, this works just fine. So, and, and the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm going to make a little texture atlas real quick. Um, and, and, and that'll be used on the, the 3D model. 
Uh, so if you notice, the, the faces all look very similar in shape. That's because the model is an anime model. So it kind of has this kind of default that of shapes for men and women that it kind of goes to. So I could prompt in and add some more details and kind of put parentheses and kind of get it away from that a little bit. Um, an easier way is to just switch the model for uh, like realistic visions, which defaults to Instagram model <laughs> aesthetics. Uh, so I haven't found like, quite a perfect one that can do like a general, just like do a bunch of different face shapes. But again, your prompts can fix all that. Um, okay, so I'm going to actually generate a few with... The realistic visions uh, model up here. Now I've generated some with the realistic visions 1.3 model. Um, so you can see the uh, the skin tones are a little a little bit richer, a little more realistic. These um this pose I guess is is a woman posing. So the shoulders are closer together. Uh, so it looks almost cartoony a little bit, um, which is fine. All we needed for this is the faces. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. So you just grab one of those that you find matches what you're looking for there. Um, so now I'm gonna go in here, let's see, like that one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy it, boop boop, because we have our working copy. And I'm gonna grab a face I like, let's say, remember he has to just have a mustache. That's good. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna grab, copy there, take one to Paint Shop Pro. Paint Shop Pro, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Canvas. I'm just gonna make it 1024 by 1024. Standard character atlas for kind of a low uh, resolution character. I'm gonna grab the face. And grab an extra layer here. There, just put a face up there. Boom. Uh, and there's gonna be room over here for like for like teeth, tongue, I'm gonna have like top and bottom of feet, I'm gonna have front and back of hands, I'm gonna have the eyeball with the pupil and iris. Um, just a bit general texture map. Look at like The Sims 4, how their character texture maps are laid out. That's kind of what I'm eventually going for here. Um, so let's take this guy. So that's, I'm gonna save that. And this will be our actual character texture that we'll actually use. And this looks okay. It's not quite centered. And then I decide right now which side do I want. I'll do that one. Because he's kind of straightforward. And I'll make sure I get that. Boop, 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 boop. It's going to look stupid, but it'll work. It's going to look stu Anything like people being symmetrical always looks weird and stupid. Looks a little, that looks a little stupid. And the legs need to be further apart. Like that actually is like a necessary thing. So it's not as symmetrical as I would like. Um, so in that case, the best thing to actually do is to not worry about this and do it in the sculpting phase for the character. Because it would be much easier to do when he's a 3D model. All right, so I am gonna grab the hand because we need an actual, a, a single picture of just the guy from the front. Grab this. You'd be surprised how lenient this is um, when you uh, do this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna merge them all down. I'm gonna grab just the guy here, front view. Boop, boop. There we go. And now I'm gonna paint out everything that's not this guy, just so it doesn't confuse the. I'm sure there are better. If you know better ways to do this, let me know. And this background is, is here because I, I chose the autumnal sunset thing just to get the lighting the way I wanted. Okay, la 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 la. It doesn't have to be great, hopefully. Okay, that's probably fine. And this is the magic crap, it's like nuts. So I'm gonna save this. All right, so that's good. It's gonna be our Atlas in a minute. Now we go to make it that picture into a 3D model, which is what we do with, where is it? Collar, don't need that anymore. Here it is. 
All right, so I've copied this Collab Notebook, the PIF UHE demo, onto my thing. I can't remember how to do this. I'll include a link below for setting this up, I'll, if I remember. Um, okay, so connecting. Bada boom, bada bing bong. Initializing, and then we're going to run through it. Top to bottom, you only need to do the first few auto, uh, manually. So the first cell, we're going to run that. Boop. Supporting Python. Alrighty. Do that in. Alright. Clone the PFood repository. Configure the input data. Here's what I'm going to actually have to do. So, should give me a browsy doodle. Use our guy right there. And now it's importing that image. And I need to make sure that I put this right here. Boop. Okay. So now that's all saved in sample images on Andreas front. Okay. And now that that's all set up, I can go to runtime and run after, and it'll make it the model. It does it, it makes a 3D model. Then when it gets to the point where it's trying to make a little turnaround video, which we don't need, um, it gives an error and I haven't figured out this stuff. I could drop it into ChatGPT, Google it, figure out all that if I wanted, but I don't need the video, so I don't really care. So now I'm just gonna go to the results folder over here. Bada bing, bada boom, doom, doom. All right, and I'm gonna download the model and the texture. We're not gonna use the texture. It does have like a normal map kind of thing built in. I don't know exactly how that's all supposed to work. It's kind of like in one image. But anyway, so there we go. It's downloaded that. And uh, now we'll import it into Blender. All right, now that's done downloading. So here's what I'll do here. Go up and import this .obj. That's gonna be on our desktop. And it's gonna just not have textures at first. So, so there we go. There it is. It's okay. We could do better. These are all rough characters. They're very high poly. Um, if you notice, like this character looks like a PlayStation One character. So you're guessing like what, like 7,500 triangles at best? No, that's a lot for a PS One. 700 maybe. I don't know. But no, it's 90,000 triangles. Um, well, 63,000 on one side. Um, this is not game ready stuff. Um, so, so we got this guy right here. I'm just gonna grab his weird little feet that don't seem to make sense. I'm gonna put the cursor there, put him on the ground. I'm gonna make him about 5'8", which is American average male height. So I'm gonna do five foot eight inches. All right, and then I'm gonna put that scale into all of them, apply it, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna add a little uh, texture. Make sure I name this to make it easier to sort things later. Andreas Atlas. All right, I'm gonna do, 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 do. Open up the image that we created should be under unorganized. Where is it? Right there. Where is it? There. There we go. All right. And what's the name of the image we used? You can rename these better. It would be really smart to do that. And in fact, I'll do it right now. Andreas Atlas. Make sure I put a D. All right. And so that's going to be it. Andreas Atlas. And import Andreas Atlas. I refresh this. There we go. Boop. I go to front view, orthographic. That looks good. Go over here on Andreas Atlas. There we go. Front view, locked in. Boop. Unwrap from view. Which gives us this right here. And no boots. The hands, the head, and the feet are things that are going to be customized later. But there you go. So that you get the front view. So you can see from this angle it looks kind of cool. From the other angles, not so much. So the boots are going to have to... I can't wait till this technology gets a little better. A couple more years, it's going to be game ready. 
uh, but right now this is kind of uh, what it, what you get, and it does require a lot of cleanup. Um, so this is 150,000 triangles, which is a little nuts. You could technically rig this right now using Rigify, which is in Blender, which is an add-on built into Blender, I think. you got to enable it or whatever. Um, it'll be really rough. Well, actually, at 150,000 tri triangles, it'll probably animate pretty smoothly, but 150,000 triangles is a lot for a character, especially when you have, like, dozens on screen at once. Um, I think, like, AAA games, like now, like PS5, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to guess. But it's more than like 30,000 triangles per character. Um, but PlayStation 1 games, like 700. Um, like, uh, yeah, like GameCube, like 7,000 maybe for, for important characters kind of thing. So um, this is a really high poly situation. What you can do is enable this. Let's see. Enable the wireframes. So you can actually see it. Go ahead, you, can, you can decimate it. But again, this is not great for deformations. As soon as you start animating, it's going to bend all weird and stuff. But um, if you're if you're like me and you're making a crappy low quality PS1 style experience, um, you know, like uh, <laughs> which I am for some of my stuff, then it's going to be fine. Like puppet combo, Chila's art kind of stuff. The, the, the deformations, of the characters are not the huge, not the 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 bottleneck there. There you go, perfect, game ready. It actually now it's like Thief One like 1998 poly level as you can see Nintendo 64 and and you could actually use something like this and then I would go for like or go around places that are like um that have a uh, bends and I would just like use the knife tool and the Z and Z to cut through and just cut through like add edge cuts it's really rough it's not great topology it's not pro professional level like a, a real actual studio would like fire you for <laughs> turning in models like that but um it's a working man's style of of, of doing graphics, and, and and it can work. Um, let's see. Let's let's not decimate it quite so much. See so if you look down here, it shows that's in ten thousand triangles. So 0 0.07, 0 0.05, 7,500. I try to keep my characters under seventy five hundred triangles. Five thousand was that was what I aim for. But um, this is a really rough way of doing this. But um, here I'm gonna actually copy this, move this over. And this is just the front view. Um, so if we take Let's turn that off for now. Go to let's go into slash to do the local mode so you only see that. And now this is the back side. So what I'll do here, make sure I'm why is it not uh selecting anything? Because I'm not in edit mode. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the back side of the guy. This is again really, really, really rough. Just to kind of give you an idea of like to get a start. Um, but yeah, I will redo all the textures. I will redo the models. Um, and I'm, I'm going to use a, a quad remesher. I'm going to experiment with that to get like a general nice quad workflow for this um, in like a really low poly way. Um, and then I'm going to use like a soft wrap. These are all plug you have to pay for. Um, quad remesher and soft wrap. Um, and, and, and like to get, to get a face. And then I'm going to use face it to um, generate the uh, AR kit uh, facial blend shapes. Um, which will animate in the Rococo Studios uh, app or, or any any kind of thing. Use like a, a, a depth radar, a lidar um, on an iPhone or something. You can actually get your animation and stuff. And I'll link a video below if I remember showing like that in action. Um, but yeah, you can get to a really cool point um, with this as kind of a starting point. Um, so I'm going to grab the back right there. Then I'm just going to move this over. Pew doesn't really fit so I'll just uh, move it there you go be like to make it kind of fit it's a little small there we go kind of and I didn't go into end painting um, and image to image to kind of make sure the back matches the front so in the back as you can see he has a hat which is not ideal but uh, it'll it'll work just fine as a start to get the kind of the game up and running. I'm just gonna line these up so they kind of generally fall onto the leg areas, and you can do the same for the side too. Okay, so now when you look at this, it's still not gonna look great. Let's turn off the wireframe now. But there's a back. Oh wow, this is really, really rough. Um, 
but uh, you could do the same thing for the side as well, and that'll get rid of these streaking things. And then what you can, and then, and then like the, what you'll do is go in and um, actually paint. That's where you like. Let's see. So if I go to here, I go to change it to Andreas. And once you have these kind of set up, um, you know, let's do the side, I guess, as well, because it's kind of important to show how this uh, process works. And if you notice, I made the pose of the guy right here. I'm, I I used an image where it's his arm is back away. That way, this area under here, like around his waist and stuff, doesn't get covered up specifically for this part right here, so that I can um, e more easily apply this stuff to the to the side of the body. Wow, this is really really bad quality, but it's only going to get better. And uh, again, none of these assets are final. It's just to get characters dropped into the game. Like I say, I'm terrible at creating things, but I'm great at improving things. Once you have something, and the first step to something being awesome is it being crappy first. Um, so once this is in the game, once you can walk around and interact, then I'll be uh, like, yeah, I should probably improve that. And I'll go through. But uh, when you have 200 characters to do, it's a, you got to start with like a rough draft kind of thing. All right, so do that. U, V. This is not going to be great. Let's see. So grab the head stuff. Put that up here. Put that up here. Okay, I'm going to grab the arm stuff only. Can't believe he doesn't have boots. This is also not symmetrical, um, which is something that I would sculpt and use a mirror or an auto mirror, the, the add-on, to kind of get that working right. Um, if you look at this and say, I could do that a lot better, then I will consider this a successful video. Okay, so there we go. All right. Triple A quality right there triple A quality. So, <laughs> you know what? For good measure, let's do a, just do a mi the mirror just so I can show you the full workflow. So let's make sure his nose is in the center of this thing because the face is going to be the hardest to fix. Make sure it's lined up straight like that. This is awful, which is the first step to being awesome. Okay, let's see. This is not going to work out well because I didn't get a good frontal pose. He's not. See how he's tilted kind of to the side. I should have mirrored that and fixed that. Like remember, like I, I was going to, and then I was like, Nah, I don't need to do that. I should have done that before making the 3D model, which would make this whole process of lining these things up a lot easier, um, and it would look a little bit better. Um, as you can see, when I go out of what should we doodle mode, local mode. This is the most recent two characters I've made. This guy Vid and this girl Allison. This is what I, I got before when I did, when I made sure that my image texture was mirrored before I generated the 3D model. And then I brought in and I mirrored. If you look, this is actually mirrored already, see? So you can get this level when I'm not rushing, you know, and, and actually doing things in a better, uh, smarter way. But uh, yeah, that's that's what you can get. Um, and look, his, his feet turned out well. You know, so in, in the case of the guy where it didn't turn out great, I would have to tweak, go back to the image, tweak, um, and, and, you know, try again. Um, but here's another one. Here's a girl that, that got a little better. And see, in the side view, if you notice, these are blended a little bit better. I've done the same thing here as I've done here. Um, but let's see. Where's the guy we're working on? Is it this one? Now I've got, now I've done goofed because I am I have two different guys. Okay, let's call it that one. Nope, not that one. All right. So then what, what you will do, what you will do, you might do something way better than this. But, let's see, you go into texture painting mode, yep, and then you can blend the side views and the, uh, the front views. And this would be a lot easier if I had, again, put it into image to image and uh, done in painting to get the clothing to line up correctly. As it stands, he's like, has totally different pants on the side, you know, so I would need to go and paint the pants back on and again it's just easier to do a lot of this stuff ahead of time than it is to fix the model later on like this but there you go and I should have cleaned up some of these things too and I could do that real quick hold on 
where's this chunk out, off here? Better. And you go down here. But yeah, the plan is to retopologize these using quad remesher and then using some manual topology, um, using a shrink wrap modifier and then a, the the actually let me just show you if I can figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to add a new object. Okay. Now I'm going to set this one's display to render in front. All right, here it is under the object properties in front. See how now it's popping through the sky no matter what? And now I'm going to go and add a uh, shrink wrap modifier to it. Shrink wrap. Where is it? Shrinky dinky shrink wrap. And I'm going to set this guy as the, well if I can, okay, so it's this one. Target. So now when I do this stuff, so I go over here, let's grab a little tiny little polygon. Okay, so flip this. And now I'm going to put my snap settings on. Snap to face. I might have not even do the shrink wrap modifier. Can I please get this plane back? There we go. Because I don't need the other ones. Okay, so now when I do this, I have to flip it. There we go. So now when I do this, control right click, watch, it's following the body. See that? Boop, boop. See that? It's very rough, but you get the idea that if you're doing this symmetrically, mirrored, then 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 it would be much simpler. Um, you'd be doing only half the work. And if you actually understand about how topology works, um, then you will absolutely uh, be able to do this in a way that is professional quality. That does animate well on the face with the blend shapes, and does animate well when the body moves. But this is actually the process of retopologizing manually. Bridge those. See, and, 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 and you can imagine going over this, you would get a much lower uh, resolution in terms of poly count um, body that would animate better um, in the engine at runtime. It would take less to render. Um, and it's easier to, to change later because you don't have a bajillion triangles that you need to manipulate just to do a minor, a minor thing. Um, so you're, you see that I'm starting, and then I would uh, what I would do eventually once I had had my good um, texture map more uh, you know better set up uh, mirrored and everything. Then I would just do the same kind of projection, and I would just project it onto there. And then um, you can consider these these texture maps as a temporary texture map, and then go ahead and hand paint the stuff later. The goal is to eventually have it look like Pixar or like an Uncharted game, where it looks kind of real but also kind of stylized in like a vivid way. Um, uh, like the Last of Us style graphics where it's not quite photo real um, but it looks really nice and, and that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of skill um, but you're on track to that stuff once you once you start actually retopologizing and, and getting a good base mesh and you, so you can see the, the, the 3D model that I generated with PIF UHD um, it's not game ready and it's not symmetrical and it doesn't look great but I can follow it I can use the contours of it to generate my good model that's actually game ready and that's the the ultimate idea uh, here, it, um, because these through these AI generated models, while amazing and huge time savers, are not yet. Maybe they will be in two years. Um, uh, game ready topology for animating and rendering and everything. Um, oops, see that one? I had the wrong projection. Oh, uh, there we go. Something like that. And you can do the whole guy, you know. Um, yeah. So that's that. Actually, you know what? I can do this too. Hold on. Let me let me do a uh, UV 
V, same kind of projection. Make sure I add that material back on. And Andreas, there we go. And now here's a start of like the actual character model. Um, and it, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's just, it is really cool. It just takes time, you know. Um, and so this is what I would eventually put them all to. For now, it's just going to be a simple, clean, uh, quick and dirty decimation um, with quad retopology and stuff to get them into the game to, uh, so I can work on the systems and get the engine running and have the villagers walking around and interacting, all this stuff. And you can talk to them. I already have a conversation system that's built in Unity, and it works. You can type in words and everything, and I'll show off that at some point uh, soon once I have characters to actually see, to talk to. Um, look at that. Yeah, so this is my current workflow. Um, quad remesher is like a hundred dollars. Um, uh, soft wrap is like fifty dollars on like Gumroad um, and stuff. They're add-ons for Blender. Um, excuse me, I haven't I haven't experimented with those yet, but I've seen a lot of videos, and I'll link a couple of videos below if I remember um, showing those in action. But this 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 can work. Um, this process it can get from. Um, an idea in your head or a list of characters that you need to concept um, makes it easier if you have uh, pictures. You know, uh, it can get from that using stable diffusion and AI tools like this, it can get to approaching game ready assets now. And why is it March 2023? In a year, it'll be like you just say a word and it'll make your game for you. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so that's basically the process. I've shown you like uh, how I put, how I, I go from the character I need to make, his name, his description, and I generate, I create a description. I add keywords, and I use ChatGPT to refine the keywords, um, and I uh, put put all that into Stable Diffusion, and I iterate and chisel away to create a good uh, turnaround texture and a portrait texture, and then I can use those to refine them further, and then put them into like a, a image to 3D generator like PIF UHD, the demo that exists um, on Google Colab, um, and then you bring that into Blender and you start to create a game ready character um, using tools like Quad Remesher, Softwrap, Rigify to create the rigs, um, um, and, it, and I have PaintShop Pro that I use for image editing and texture editing, but there are free things like GIMP. Um, and uh, Krita, I think, is one that's pretty good. I haven't, I, I've heard about it, but I haven't checked it into it. But um, yeah, uh, there are a lot. Of, if you notice, a lot of this stuff that I've, I've shown you is free. Um, you just have to have a good computer, and that's 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 the, the hardware. Um, but yeah, Stable Diffusion, that's free. The model checkpoints for that are free. Um, Control Net on it for to get the poses and stuff, that's free. Um, Blender, free. Um, uh, Quadri Mesher and Soft Wrap, not free. Rigify, free. Um, it's it's all doable and it's it's becoming more democratized. It's really really cool. So that's basically my work workflow now. I know I'm sure it's taken a bajillion years longer than I wanted, but I wanted to be a little thorough. That's my excuse to say I didn't want to edit. Um, I actually did, as you can see, there were edits of this. But um, so that's my current process, and and uh, it's. But I will include links to some some actual like professional like quick stuff to to set things up and get stable diffusion running and everything um, in the description below if I remember. And yeah, so that's 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 the current progress for my Age of Singularity side project and my main game, Knots game. Um, there's Danny, Rory, Carolina, Ali, Vid, Allison. So I'm doing a lot of these characters. I'm doing this for um, Age of Singularity, which is 200 characters for the Ultima Six from the Ultima Six game, and then I'm also doing it for my own game, which is so far the core character list is 150 characters. Um, you saw how long this took. It's faster when I'm just uh, working together, but it's still like I can do five a day, and it's like, oh my god, it's intense. Um, but if that's the process, that's a process, and it's a bajillion years faster than it would have been doing it without all these AI tools. Um, you know, like I, I wouldn't have been possible to do it at any reasonable level of quality. I mean, I wouldn't uh, if I didn't have these AI tools. Like the, these AI tools are really what allows me to uh, hold on. The AI tools are what are really allows you to create high quality models and textures like this. <laughs> That's a joke, but but it's a start. You know, it's a start, and you can paint. You know, you can work with it. You can work with it. Um, it's it's I, I find it very handy, and uh. 
you can see, don't look at, like, Two Minute Papers, great YouTube channel says, don't look at where it is right now, look at where it's going to be in two years. And, uh, like, holy crap, dude. Like, it's, 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 it's on track to be really, really cool. So I guess that's it. So again, I'm Westing Tyler. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.